<laughs> Guess who has a degree in chemical engineering? Guess what chemical engineers like to talk a lot about? Vapor liquid equilibrium. So let's have a video here on Raoult's law that's a little bit more in depth than you would normally cover in a chemistry 152 class. So let's say we have two liquids. Let's say benzene and acetone. describe the vapor pressure of a mixture of benzene and acetone. So I'm going to have a graph that looks like this. And on both axes it's just the vapor pressure of solution. So basically what do we expect the vapor pressure to be? Now on this bottom axis we're going to have the fraction benzene. So basically how much benzene do we have in solution? This needs to be a mole fraction. So this is going to be X benzene. Now if our fraction, our fraction can be anywhere between 0 and 1, so we either have 0 benzene, meaning we have a pure acetone solution, or we have 100% for X of benzene equal 1, so we have 100% benzene solution. Now, what do you expect the vapor pressure of this solution to be if you don't have any benzene in it? Well, the answer is going to be the vapor pressure of acetone. There's no benzene, it's pure acetone. And so our vapor pressure here has to be the P of acetone, P naught of acetone. If we have a 100% benzene solution, we expect the vapor pressure to be the vapor pressure of benzene. So it's easy enough. If we have a pure solution, we expect its vapor pressure to be the vapor pressure of whatever that liquid is. Pure acetone, it's gonna be the vapor pressure of acetone. If we've got pure benzene, it's the vapor pressure of benzene. Now here's the hard part. What does it look like between the two? So, there are three ways this graph can look. The first and the easiest is what's called an ideal solution. It's a straight line. So an ideal solution, if it's a straight line, is basically going to say that the vapor pressure is a linear combination of their individual vapor pressures. That's a big way of saying that the vapor pressure, p vape, is equal to the fraction of benzene times the vapor pressure of benzene plus however much of the solution is acetone. So this is going to be 1 minus the mass, 1 minus the mole fraction of benzene. This is for a binary solution. Times the vapor pressure of acetone. So basically our vapor pressure, our total pressure of solution is just a linear combination of the individual vapor pressures weighted by how much of it we have in solution. So if we have no benzene, x is 0, this becomes 0 times the vapor pressure of benzene plus 1 minus 0 times the vapor pressure of acetone, which will give us this point here. If we have 100% benzene, we're going to have 1 here and a 0 here, so it's just going to be the vapor pressure of benzene. Any combination between the two, let's say we have 50%. Well, if x is 0.5, it's going to be half the vapor pressure of benzene plus half the vapor pressure of acetone. Now, this is what's referred to as an ideal solution. And ideal solutions basically follow this linear combination approach. Are there other types of solutions? Yes, but they are outside the scope of this class, but I will tell you what they are, what they're called. We can have one form which is called the negative deviation. So a negative deviation is basically where these two molecules really like each other. And so what they'll do is they'll stick together. We get stronger IMF, and when we have stronger intermolecular forces, we get lower vapor pressures. And so when you see a negative deviation away, this is typically when you have two solutions that are perfect for each other. Ethanol and water are a great example of this. They love each other, so they drop each other's vapor pressures. We can also have what's called positive deviation. And when we have positive deviation, we have two solutions that they mix, but they really don't like each other. Because they don't like each other, basically they drive up their vapor pressure trying to get away from each other. Now, whether a solution has positive deviation, negative deviation, or follows this ideal rule, you don't know a priori. 
So at the general chemistry level, we just assume everything follows this relationship, which we're going to call Rose Law. In the absence of any other information, we have to assume that the final pressure is just the sum of the individual vapor pressures weighted by how much of them are in solution. Only if you go to a higher chemistry course, if you take chemical engineering, do you actually have to worry about these positive and negative deviations. And typically, what you find out with, we just kind of have to go to tables.